So although it can be pretty convenient to have a server sitting right next to us, unfortunately it can create quite a bit of noise and especially when the fans are going up and we want to avoid that. So in our environment, I'd like to walk you through the steps of taking our rack server, which we've actually prepared in previous videos and now moving it from right next to me over to the physical rack. So again, this physical server has been right here next to me. And so occasionally the fans get pretty loud. We'll move this back to the rack. So prior to moving the server, let's put a game plan together regarding the correct power down of both the vCenter as well as the physical host. And then also talk about the network connections that we're gonna use when we put this back in the rack. So let's do a before and after approach. So currently I've got the physical host sitting right next to me. Again, this is ESXi6. And with VM kernel adapter zero, it's reachable at 192.168.1.106. So let's go ahead and draw in my 192.168 network right here. This is 192.168.1 with a 24-bit mask. And then on this ESXi host, I have four physical ports and we are currently using the fourth one. So from a VMware perspective, these are called VM NICs. Those are the physical interface cards. And currently we're using VM NIC 3. So this is zero one, two, and three, and we are connected right here down to the network. Now behind the scenes, how that's really happening is I have that port connected over to a little switch. Well, what are the other connections you have here regarding this little switch? Let me go ahead and draw that little switch and it is right here. And let me erase that ethernet connection because the real ethernet connection goes from this port right down to that little switch right there. And then over here, I've got iDRAC. So on this host, I have iDRAC support that we set up previously, and that's reachable at .241, if memory serves correct, and that is also connected into my home network, the 192.168.1 network, via that little switch. And then the third port off this little switch actually connects to yet another switch, which connects to my 192.168.1 network. And all of this in my home network is VLAN number one, meaning that we are not using 802.1Q tagging for any access to this logical network segment of 192.168.1. Also on this unmanaged switch, it doesn't support trunking or anything else. And again, one flat network I'm using in association with that VLAN. So this is the before picture, or I should say the current picture of how we have it set up. And let's go ahead and put a plan together for after. So after, we're still going to have that physical host. Now in the rack behind me, it's a 19-inch rack. I already have the rack sliders installed in the rack, so it'll be super easy to put this physical server and slide it into the rack. So in the back of my rack, I also have a switch. And so my intention is to take the port that we're using with iDRAC and plug that into that switch in the back of my rack and also take port number three, which is VMNIC3, which is my fourth physical port, and plug that into my switch as well. And for our demos for this switch, I am not going to set up trunking. However, just as a heads up, in a production network or in a full-fledged lab network, it's very likely we want to set these ports up as trunk ports supporting 802.1Q tagging and trunking. However, for the benefit of simplicity here, I'm not going to do anything special on these ports. It's going to leave them in the default VLAN, which is VLAN 1. Very similar to this unmanaged switch, we'll have the same logical connectivity. And in association with this switch, I also have a router function that's configured, which also has physical connectivity to that switch. So my router's at dot one, and my network is 192.168.1.0 with a 24-bit mask, that hasn't changed, and the default gateway is at dot one. So this default gateway here, this router function is providing network address translation for access to the outside world, for example, like the internet. And it also is providing DHCP services should we want to use them for anybody who needs an IP address on this 192.168.1 network. So just to be clear about the IP addresses that we are using for iDRAC, which is accessible via this dedicated ethernet port here, we're using the IP address of .241, as mentioned up here, that's not gonna change. For the ESXi VM kernel adapter, and I think by default it's using VM kernel zero, it's using the IP address of dot one zero six. And for our vCenter server appliance, we're using the IP address of dot 30. So our game plan is to leave all that in place and simply place this physical server in the rack behind me. Now to do that, I don't wanna just pull the plug on the power for this ESXi host because vCenter server is currently running and I wanna do a graceful shutdown of it and also a graceful shutdown of the actual ESXi host. So here's what I propose we do. Number one, let's go ahead and do a graceful shutdown of the vCenter. And we're gonna do that by going to the management console, the GUI interface for vCenter and simply telling it that we want to go ahead and shut down. 
Then secondly, we're going to go to the vSphere host client directly to this ESXi host, and we're going to do a shutdown there. And prior to doing that shutdown of the actual ESXi host, we'll also do a quick verification just to make sure vCenter has been gracefully powered off and is no longer running as a VM. Then once it's all powered off, we'll physically move this over to the rack. I'll put the new cable connections in, and then we'll go ahead and power that ESXi host back up. So let me walk you through the shutdown of the vCenter server and also the shutdown of the ESXi host right now. So currently this is us logged into the vSphere client. So just as a nice way of exiting out, we can simply click here, click on log out, and then close this window because we're not going to use the vSphere client. We're going to go ahead and use the management interface for vCenter. So here at the management interface for vCenter, we could log in here as the administrator for our single sign-on domain with vSphere 8, or we could log in as root. Either way works. So we'll log on. And then here in the vCenter server management console, we'll click on actions and we'll click shut down and we'll click on yes. All right, so vCenter is on its way down. Next, let's go to the ESXi host client, verify that vCenter has correctly shut down. And then once that's done, we'll shut down the ESXi host itself. So here we are at the ESXi host client at dot one zero six. And if we go to virtual machines here, currently the vCenter server is powered off. So that did a graceful shutdown. Fantastic. I'm also going to take a quick peek just to make sure there's no other powered on VMs. So there's one that vCenter places right there and that's okay, but there's no other running critical VMs that we need to be concerned with. So we'll go to host and with host selected here in the host client, we'll click on shutdown and then we'll click on shutdown and then we'll simply wait for the physical host to power off. All right, so it's been a minute that physical server is powered off and it's time now to move it from right here next to me over to the rack. All right, so welcome to the backside of my studios. I'm gonna take this server right here that we've just configured and powered off and we're gonna put it in that rack. So come this way and we'll get it set up. Also, I've got some baffling here that I put in a couple years ago to help with the sound. And uh, this is a just a, a sound blanket with an extra layer of like uh, sound absorbing rubber in the middle that helps me when I have five or six servers running to not be too loud for the recording. I've got one, two, I've got five servers there and I currently have the rack mount kit right here. So I'm going to just place it right here. These are uh, Dell easy rails. Oh my gosh. Wait till you see how easy they are. So it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, I put the rails in here and you simply set the server in the rails and slide it in. Ta-da. So let's go grab the server. So here's the unmanaged switch that I used a moment ago. This top server is powered off and I'm simply going to go ahead and disconnect everything from this physical server. So there's the iDRAC connection. This was the old VGA, which I was no longer using. We used that for the initial setup. This is the USB connections for a keyboard and mouse, which are also not using anymore. This is the connection for the VMNIC 3 and this is the power. And you might be wondering, well, Keith, why do you have two servers here? Well, I got both of them for about $300 each and they both have 256 gigs of RAM, which is a great deal. However, uh, when they were shipped, they got the bejeebers smashed out of them. Uh, these are all just smashed to bits. And so the bottom one here, I tried to initialize it and get it running. It wouldn't even fly. And this one is the one we just configured previously. And even though it got, you know, beat up pretty bad, is still flying. If you have a powered on server with power attached and you take off the cover, it's gonna have a whole bunch of bells and whistles that fire off and the fans are gonna go super hot, but it's not plugged in. So there is the, the guts. So I put the flash drive right there. That is the flash drive I just plugged into the slot that we installed ESXi to. And then over here, because it's powered off, you can't see it, but I'll bring it out. I'm gonna hit the button and take out the one terabyte drive. Actually, it's like 900 and something gig, but that's it. I just put it in the slot and plugged it in, and that's the drive we provisioned earlier as well. Also, in a production environment, before we touched any of the components here, we'd wanna make sure we're grounded and have static sensitive precautions in place so we don't shock or harm anything. So there's 256 gigs of RAM, there's the two giant processors, there's a row of fans. All right, so I'm gonna put the lid back on, and now I'll try to catch it, and there we go, perfect. So this little thing just slides it all the way up to make it nice and flush. So over here to the easy rails, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this. It has little notches here on the side, and these simply fall into each of the slots in the easy rails, and we're good to go. All right, so let's give it a shot. It's gonna look for the open slots here. Again, this is a lot better with two people. The left side's done, and the right side's done. And I think I got them all in. I'll just check to make sure they're all snug. Yeah, that's it. So to insert this, I got these little safeties on the side. We'll push them in on each side and then gracefully and gently start moving it in. And then we are good to 
go. So I'll slide all the way in and boom, rack mounted server. So it'd also be a good idea to either know where it is or better yet label it so we can identify it. There's also a tool in iDRAC to tell it to go ahead and start blinking so you can identify the correct server, which is great. And here I have a UPS and I've got a couple more UPSs off to the side in the event of a power outage. And up here I have a Frankenstein 48 port gigabit switch and behind the rack I've got some 10 gig switches and some other switches as well. And for the server that we just installed, I'm now going to make those physical connections that we talked about in the video. So assuming we're all done with this part, I'll go ahead and put this cover back up. All right. And then I'm going to connect the back. So there's not enough room back there for a camera person and me, but let me go ahead and put those physical connections in place. So we have one connection on BMNIC3 going to my switch back there and another one for the management port, which is for iDRAC going back there. And then one connection for power. All right, so I'm gonna make these connections and I'll see you back in just a bit. So I just plugged in that server to the power and to the ethernet connections. I just wanna verify from the switch back there that I have connectivity and it's on the ports that I think it is. So back there, it's a Cisco Catalyst switch and I'm using ports 1013 and 1014. And so as that server is coming up, it's changing the state of those ports. And let's also do a show on the Cisco switch interface status. And these are the two ports right here. So they are configured as trunk ports, but just to help validate that I'm not actually using trunking, let me go modify those two ports. So on the switch, I'm gonna basically tell them that they are no longer trunk ports, they're just associated with VLAN one. So do an interface range command for gig one slash zero slash 13 through 14. See if that takes, that looks good. So any commands we do here, will apply to those two ports. And we'll simply say switch port post which is a very fast way of saying you're an access port and by default it's gonna be in VLAN one. So with that done, we'll do a show interface status just to verify. And there's our two ports right there. So one of these is being used for the iDRAC connection and the other one is physically connected up to VMNIC three on the ESXi host. All right, so let me go ahead and save that here on this switch. And at the moment, it looks like it's still doing some initialization because it is still changing the state of one or more of those interfaces. So I'll give that just a couple minutes. And then once the host is fully initialized and the vCenter server appliance is fully running, we'll go ahead and try to log in. So right here from the switch, we can do a ping the ESXi host at 192.168.1.106. And that's flying. And we could also try to ping the vCenter server at .30. And yeah, vCenter is not quite ready to go. And also it's a really good sign that we are able to connect to this IP address. That means I've got the networking physical connections in place and that these ports right here are correctly configured from a switching perspective. So I'm just gonna do a continuous ping there. Oh, look at that, I waited long enough. So that is the ping to the IP address of our vCenter server appliance. So the fact that it's responding means that the vCenter is running and it may take again a couple more minutes for the vSphere client to be fully ready for us. So currently trying to go to that IP address, we have 503 message, so the service is not ready yet. And then that should change eventually to where it's saying it's initializing the vSphere client. And then finally, once it's fully ready, we should be able to log in. So let's do a quick login just to verify that everything is honky dory. All right, so if we go up here to the vCenter level and go to monitor and look at triggered alarms, Looks like I have a vCenter health alarm. So that could have been just due to the reboot there. So we'll go ahead and reset that to green. And if we have an alarm that keeps coming back and back, like vCenter utilization is way too high regarding CP or something else, we can also go in and modify the parameters for that VM to give it additional resources. So at the moment, that little vCenter server appliance, if we scroll down here, has four CPUs, 21 gigs of RAM. And again, if we need more, we could go ahead and give it more. But as far as a transfer of this physical host right here over into the rack, that looks like a win. We currently have access to the vCenter server appliance and that server appears to be running and responding correctly. So now that we have moved that server and it's no longer sitting next to me, but it's now in my rack, in our next video, let's leverage vCenter and let's create a distributed switch in preparation for deploying a full nested environment. So I'll see you in the next video for vSphere distributed switch.